Chapter 2 Mistress Mary Quite Contrary Mary had liked to look at her mother from a distance, and she had thought her very pretty. But as she knew very little of her, she could scarcely have been expected to love her or to miss her very much when she was gone. She did not miss her at all, in fact, and as she was a self-absorbed child, she gave her entire thought to herself, as she always had done. If she had been older, she would have no doubt been very anxious at being left alone in the world. But she was very young, and as she had always been taken care of, she supposed she always would be. What she thought was, she wondered if it was going to be nice people who would be polite to her and give her her own way, as her Aya and the other native servants had always done. She knew that she was not going to stay in the English clergyman's house where she was taken at first. She did not want to stay. The English clergyman was poor, and he had five children nearly all the same age, and they wore shabby clothes, and they were always quarreling and snatching toys from each other. Mary hated their untidy bungalow and was so disagreeable to them that after the first day or two, nobody would play with her. By the second day, they had given her a nickname, which made her furious. It was Basil who thought of it first. Basil was a little boy with an impudent blue eyes and a turned up nose, and Mary hated him. She was playing by herself under a tree just as she had been playing on the day the cholera broke out. She was making heaps of earth and paths for a garden, and Basil came up and he stood near to watch her. Presently he got rather interested, and suddenly he made a suggestion. Why don't you put a heap of stones there and pretend it's a rockery, he said, there in the middle, and he leaned over to point. Go away, cried Mary. I don't want boys. Go away. For a moment, Basil looked angry, and then he began to tease. He was always teasing his sisters. He danced round and rounder, and he made faces, and he sang, and he laughed. Mistress Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and marigolds all in a row. He sang it until the other children heard it and laughed, too. And the crosser Mary got, the more they sang Mistress Mary Quite Contrary. And after that, as long as she stayed with them, they called her Mistress Mary Quite Contrary when they spoke of her to each other, and often when they spoke to her. You're going to be sent home, Basil said to her, at the end of the week, and we're glad of it. I'm glad of it too, answered Mary. Where is home? She doesn't know where home is, said Basil, with seven-year-old scorn. It's England, of course. Our grandmama lives there, and our sister, Mabel, was sent there last year. You're not going to your grandmama. You have none. You're going to your uncle, and his name is Mr. Archibald Craven. I don't know anything about him, said Mary. I know you don't, Basil said. You don't know anything. Girls never do. I heard father and mother talking about him. He lives in a great, big, desolate old house in the country, and no one ever goes near him. And he's so cross, he won't let them. And they wouldn't come even if he would let them. He's a hunchback, and he's horrid. I don't believe you, said Mary. And she turned her back, and she stuck her fingers in her ears, because she would not listen any more. But she thought over it a great deal afterwards, and when Mrs. Crawford told her that night that she was going to sail away to England in a few days and go to her uncle, Mr. Archibald Craven, who lived at Misselthwaite Manor, she looked so stony and stubbornly uninterested that they did not know what to think about her. They tried to be kind to her, but she only turned her face away when Mr. Crawford attempted to kiss her when Mrs. Crawford attempted to kiss her and held herself stiffly when Mr. Crawford patted her shoulder. She is such a plain child, Mrs. Crawford said pityingly afterward, and her mother was such a pretty creature. She had a very pretty manner, too, and Mary has the most unattractive ways I've ever seen in a child. 
The children call her Mistress Mary quite contrary, and though it's naughty of them, one can't help but understand it. <coughs> Perhaps if her mother had carried her pretty face and her pretty manners oftener into the nursery, Mary might have learned some pretty ways too. It is very sad now the poor beautiful thing is gone, and to remember that many people never even knew she had a child at all. I believe she scarcely ever looked at her, said Miss Crossford. When her Aya was dead, there was no one to give a thought to the little thing. Think of the servants running away and leaving her all alone in that deserted bungalow. Colonel McGrew said he nearly jumped out of his skin when he opened that door and found her standing by herself in the middle of the room. Mary made the long voyage to England under the care of an officer's wife who was taking her children to leave them in a boarding school. She was very much absorbed in her own little boy and girl and was rather glad to hand the child over to the woman Mr. Archibald Craven had sent to meet her in London. The woman was his housekeeper at Misselthwaite Manor and her name was Miss Medlock. She was a stout woman with very red cheeks and sharp black eyes. She wore a very purple dress and a black silk mantle with jet fringe on it and a black bonnet with purple velvet flowers which stuck up and trembled when she moved her head. Mary did not like her at all, but as she very seldom liked people, there was nothing remarkable in that. Besides which, it was very evident Miss Medlock did not think much of her either. My word! She's a plain little piece of goods, she said, and we'd heard that her mother was such a beauty. She hasn't handed much of it down, has she? Well, perhaps she'll improve as she grows older, the officer's wife said good-naturedly. If she were not so sallow and had a nicer expression, her features are rather good. Children alter so much. She'll have to alter a good deal, answered Miss Medlock. There's nothing likely to improve children at Misselthwaite, if you ask me. They thought Mary was not listening because she was standing a little apart from them at the window of the private hotel they had gone to. She was watching the passing buses and cabs and people, but she heard quite well and was made very curious about her uncle and the place he lived in. What sort of place was it? And what would he be like? What was a hunchback? She'd never seen one. Perhaps there were none in India.